If current trends are to believe, the compact crossover segment is about to become the best-selling segment in the auto industry. Kia's latest entry is the all-new Sportage. Does it maintain the Kia brand of value for money? Is it good? Is it competitive? What do we think of it? That's what we're going to find out next on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive. With as crowded as the compact crossover segment is, you have to do something special to really stand out, to give uh, consumers a reason to purchase your brand over a competing brand. And in the past, Kia has dialed in the value for money uh, equation pretty well. And in some ways they still do, but they also look to be making a move into a more premium segment or premium of the standard segment, right? They're not obviously trying to become a luxury car, but trying to appeal at least in some trim levels to people who might be thinking of uh, moving up to a luxury brand. And that's what this trim is. This is the SX trim of the Kia Sportage. This is a front wheel drive version. It comes with a two liter uh, inline four turbocharged uh, 240 horsepower. Power wise, there's plenty here. Uh, front wheel drive versus all wheel drive, you know, 99% of the time you're going to be fine with with front wheel drive. Uh, do you need all wheel drive? That's a whole separate uh, conversation and 90% of the time you, you're, you're fine if you just do uh, winter tires again. That's a whole separate video, which perhaps we'll do something on in here in the near future. But as a front wheel drive, you know, compact crossover vehicle, how is it? Well, it's, it's actually pretty good. We have done about 700 miles in this car in the week that we've had it. We had a trip to Indiana for a, uh, for, to, uh, to meet up with Michelin and Tire Rack for winter tires and talking about those. And it was a pretty interesting thing, but, and that's why we make the comment about using winter tires. But on that trip, it was about 200, a little over 200 miles each way. You know, it, it did well. It was very comfortable to drive. Uh, you didn't get uncomfortable. The seat didn't become uncomfortable in that time frame. In fact, the seats are actually are pretty good. Also in this trim level, they are both heated and cooled. The, uh, the steering wheel is also heated. So these are nice touches. And again, why we say that perhaps you're trying to appeal to a bit of a more luxurious crowd or people who are looking for those features. But to go to the opposite side of that coin or drop the other foot on that, there's some curious emissions of which you have to pay for, including the cover for the cargo area. That is, and we had to write it down, so we'll check our notes here. I'm coming up to a stop sign so we're not driving. Okay. So the cargo cover is a $150 option in the top level trim. The cargo net was uh, like a $50 option. Remote start. We can argue whether or not that should be included in this, because we'll get to the price here in a minute. Four twenty-five for remote start. That seems a little excessive. Uh, they do have a, uh, a heater for your windshield washer fluid, which is nice if you live in a colder climate, but that's a $250 option. So why am I saying all these things that they should you know, be included? Well, because this is the front wheel drive version and there are no options on it. It, it pretty much comes as is. Uh, 33395 with delivery. So value for money, you're starting to get on that, ooh, that's, that's pushing it. Is it ridiculous? No, especially for, you know, decent uh, leather interior. Again, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, uh, their Uvo system, 8-inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, 
you know, it comes it comes well equi equipped. You know, no no arguments on that. But at 33 grand, value is getting close to just kind of average. Nothing special. Fuel economy is interesting on this for a couple reasons. What's posted here on the Monroney, and this is for front wheel drive, uh, it listed as 21 city, 26 highway, 23 combined. Now we've actually done better than the EPA. Unusual for us, we usually get about EPA because we don't pussyfoot it around. Uh, but on our trip to Indiana for the for the Michelin event, we saw 28 and change on the highway, going 80-ish. Um, combined, we we're seeing a right around 25 to 26. So fuel economy is actually very good. No complaints there. Again, that's front wheel drive. If you're gonna go all wheel drive, figure on knocking one to two miles per gallon off of all of that. So let's talk about Apple CarPlay for a second. A uh, lot of hype on Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We don't have an Android phone, so we can't comment on that, but we'll talk about Apple CarPlay. Um, our experience with Apple CarPlay on this, on, on the Kia Uvo system is similar to what we've seen in other vehicles, whether it's uh, GM, Volkswagen, um, and somebody else I can't think of off the top of my head. And, and sometimes it's specific to an application. So if you're listening to podcasts, and we use the Overcast app, it sometimes doesn't like to start up immediately. Uh, you can hit play and it'll just reset to the beginning, to the, you know, to like essentially the CarPlay home screen. It's, it's not a panacea. It's nice. It makes something simpler. It makes for a consistent interface. It's great, it's good, it's not a world changer. The built-in system that, that Kia has with the Uvo, uh, the general system here in their, their touchscreen is fine. Um, is it better or worse? It's just different. And, it's, and it works just as well. So if you don't have you know, Android Auto or, or if you're not gonna use Android Auto or, or, or Apple CarPlay, you'll be fine. Now this does have a Harman Kardon sound system in here, in this spec, and it's good. Uh, we've run a variety of music through here. It's not world-class, but for people who are buying this, it's gonna be more than fine unless you get the rare audio file. And of course, you'll be able to pick that apart, but uh, you know, with all the environment that you have in driving a car, you can't really expect what you get in a home system. That said, have we heard better systems in cars? Yes, but at this price point, it's it's very good. As far as competitive in the segment, it's very good. Uh, no bones about it. It's probably one of the best in the segment. And we're not gonna call it the best because different people have different needs and you may not like a few things in here. You may not need some of the things in here. Um, for us, it would work if we if this was our you know daily vehicle. We're able to put our dog in here which, you know, it's a 160 pound English Mastiff. That's saying something. She was able to, you know, we put her steps up and she was able to climb up and stand up and move around, lay down and be comfortable back there. And that's even with her, with her steps. Um, you know, we were able to haul a bunch of stuff to recycling of a lot of cardboard and boxes and some other stuff that fit in here fine. Again, comfort and driving, very good. Fuel economy, certainly better than advertised. There's a lot of reasons to pick this vehicle over others in the segment. We'll hesitate to call this best in segment or best in class just because different people will have different needs. You may you know, need or like something that this doesn't offer. What that is, I don't know off the top of my head, but could be something. Perhaps you're just brand loyal to something else. Um, your, uh, you know, your mileage is gonna vary on that, but this is something that you definitely will want to drive to see. One other thing we can't forget about is the styling on this. It's interesting, and that's generally a good thing. You're not gonna miss this, especially the front end, uh, in a parking lot. It stands out a bit. And when we first saw it, we thought, hey, that looks like, and we'll hold up for a second, and we're like, no, that can't be it, except the uh, the company who brings us the cars, or at least these cars, um, the guy said, hey, doesn't that kind of look like, and we go, that was our first reaction. 
And in the week that we've had it, we've had three other people say, hey, that looks like, and if you haven't guessed by now, yes, it looks a bit Cayman McCann, uh, it looks a little, sorry, it looks a little Cayenne slash uh, McCann-esque, right? Well, there's a reason why the guy who designs Kias used to work, you know, for a certain German company that owned Porsche. Uh, so I guess that shouldn't come as, as a surprise. So it's not in your face, oh, hey, it's a copy, but there's certain styling cues in here that are, very, you know, definitely draw you to that conclusion. So overall, Kia Sportage, do we like it? Yes. Is it well-equipped? Is it comfortable? Yes. Pricing? Not bad. Not great, not bad. Again, cars are getting more expensive every year. You know, they, they say, whoever they are, that, well, when you look at everything that comes uh, on vehicles now in pricing, and then you take inflation out, and you look 15, 20, I'm sorry. It, yes, on paper it works out, but there's something that A and B don't equal C on that, right? So 33 grand, yes, that's a lot of money, uh, especially for, you know, kind of an average, what like an average person is gonna buy. You're talking, you know, a uh, uh, $300 lease payment, or if you're gonna buy it, you're talking something probably north of $500, depending on what you put down on the vehicle. Again, we like this. Generally, we like Kias. We think they're good vehicles. And this one continues that trend. We like it. We can recommend it. And if nothing else, if you're in the market, you definitely need to drive this vehicle and compare it to everything else. Because I think if you haven't considered Kia, you probably should. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Like, share, subscribe, share us on your social medias. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.